Hello there, World of Tankers, and today I'm going to review the Predator UM. It's not in the shop right now, but if you meet it on the battlefield, you might want to know what you're dealing with. Let's start off by looking at the stats. 1,500 hit points, 162 millimeters on the front of the turret, so quite well armored there. We have 2,400 DPM with three shots in a clip. 1.5 seconds intra clip right there. 180 alpha damage, 184 millimeters of standard penetration. Decent aim time, good accuracy, only 6 degrees of gun depression, however, which means that if a vehicle, especially a small vehicle, gets close to you, you should do absolutely everything you can to get that away again, because you will not be able to depress that gun, as one could say that it is permanently erect, that this gun is not going to be able to depress down whenever a small tank approaches. That would be very, very careful and stay away from, especially vehicles like an E25, uh, you don't want to fight those up close, and you want to keep your distance to all of the small vehicles in the game. And the maneuverability on this vehicle isn't really that good. I mean, it is a heavy tank, so it's fine, but the powder weight ratio is 14.7, so you won't be able to move around that quickly. Obviously, consumables and all that, very easy. This is how I would personally equip it. Obviously, it is a autoloader, so I would just go for the calibrated here. It does have APCR, which means it doesn't quite benefit from the big bonus that heat provides, but overall, it is going to be a solid result. Now, improved assembly, enhanced armor. It always depends how thick is the armor, how angled is the armor. Um, but the rest, like the refined gun, I think here is the better choice. Because the vehicle is simply not fast enough to profit much off the vertical stabilizer. That's how I would pick these two, right? If the vehicle's slow and inaccurate, you pick the refined gun. If it's really fast and already has good accuracy, the vertical stabilizer is going to be the better option. And then obviously... These are going to be straightforward and simple. So now let's get right into a battle right here. Obviously, if I would be a good YouTuber, I would actually cut this piece right here where I'm simply staring at the queue, not knowing when the next battle is going to begin. However, because I like ad revenue and uh, your attention span is probably lacking and you don't have anything better to do, let's keep talking right here while I possibly wait for a match in this vehicle and uh here we are now and uh i definitely could have cut this but because i have no talent and don't care about my audience i am not going to actually cut that and i'm gonna go roll through at once without any sort of changes now we got a battle here with seven tanks on each side i think that is quite obvious we're top tier which is very nice got a smasher on our team so let's see what is going to happen. I hope they don't go to the city. That will be quite sad. Uh, T4485. And that is very sad. Right there to see. Yeah, ideally, especially in this map, you don't want to go to the city. And a vehicle like this, you can't really side script very well. The turret is technically at the rear of the vehicle. But because of how tall it is and how compressed this vehicle looks, it is pretty much impossible to do proper side scraping. Here, the armor is good enough. Um... But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep myself towards the middle of the map here. If your team does go to the city, I always tend to try to play towards the middle of the map to retain the map control uh, to have that overall stability still. Because if you're stuck in a corner, then you don't want to do anything like that, Dicker Max. But then again, he is level 48 player, so that is to be expected there. That the capability for brain is quite inhibited. And now let's see what we're going to do here. Obviously, the Karo... Well, he's AFK. He's probably the best target right now to just simply even up here. Obviously, that Dicker Max and the other tank store are probably going to go down quite quickly. Let's see if we're going to be able to take out this Karo. You might ask yourself, hey, why am I going for an AFK? Don't I have better things to do? I ask you, don't you have better things to do? Wait a minute. You can't because the other guy's gone. What? So, here we go. Now, obviously, taking out an AFK is always going to be useful because if this guy wakes up... That means that uh, he's still going to be a threat later. So if we take him out now, he's not going to be a threat to anybody. And it's also free damage, so I can claim that I'm a better player than I am. Of course, in the end result. Because, again, I'm not going to pick a battle here. I'm just going to play a random battle rather than taking the time to play a battle that is also worth showing on YouTube. I'm still here going to pick a random battle because right after this video, I have to move on to make another 17 different videos as well, obviously. So let's now move forward. Obviously, the Kermax is gone. The other tank destroyer is gone. Nobody could have ever predicted that. And now let's see. Obviously, the blast droid should be easy to get rid of. Three shot auto loader here. Uh, will be easy if he does peak. He's massive. Look at that. See, this is the kind of 
uh, object that you want to hide, right? Especially if that object resides in your pants, you do not want to pull that out because that could be very dangerous, right? So, yeah. Let's see. Let's go up here. Let's go with the Sherman. Uh, the Sherman. It is full v so It should be quite easy to pull off here, right? Gonna just still on full HP. It's always useful to be on full HP, right? Because at the end of the battle, um, you can take more trades. Uh, you have a better chance at winning the battle. I'm not saying you should camp at the start of the battle, of course, in a vehicle like this. Um, but staying on a high amount of hit points can always be useful. So, let's see. Yep, that's nice. We won this one. So, let's now just waste your time even further by narrating pointlessly over a piece of gameplay that is no educational or entertainment value whatsoever. So, let's see. I'm gonna drive forward. Probably not gonna get the Leo kill right here. The 44 is gonna claim it. Probably the 100 is gonna... The 10 is gonna claim it. So, there you go. Not too bad. The Predator UM. Is it a tank that is actually worth buying? Well, I don't know. I don't think we hit 8 minutes yet, so I'm gonna have to play another battle right here. Um... But uh, let's talk about that later. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, obviously, if you want to see uh, more pointless rambling. Um, obviously. Um, let's go into another battle. And obviously this vehicle is often sold with the other Ultramarines vehicle as well, which has a massive short pipe that I don't recommend. I mean, basically it's like a beefed up copy of the SU-152. The vehicle that this one's being sold with um and i don't recommend that even if you have a short pipe you want to be very careful with how you use it in battle um let's see I'm gonna move up here don't want to go city obviously i have once again forgotten to disable supremacy which is a mode i don't like whatsoever uh, which is also information that you don't need but it helps me stretch the time also overcome the dead space that is happening right now in the battle uh let's see we got one afk got a t43 that's moving up there so ideally we're gonna wait for the crossfire here right it's always about finding yourself the opportunity to do damage um there's a kv1s who's now taking the b cap he's playing this pretty smart i think uh trying to take the cap points my shells are ground magnetic that is always nice so let's see push around the back of the Y5. Ideally, you don't want to turn around. You don't want to push back into the enemy, right? Because if the enemy is pushing one side and they're pushing forward, they basically have the momentum that direction. So the best course of action there is always go for the side of the enemy team that is weaker, um, that is smaller in numbers, right? Um, there are certain things in life where you should not absolutely, under any circumstances, go for the smaller in numbers one, uh, but in World Tank Splits it is very beneficial to actually go for the side where there are less enemies, because that means that you have to fight less at the same time, and you always only want to be with one person at the same time that you are fighting in their enemy vehicles. It could also be a boss if you're in noob matchmaking and you're a beginner, but you always want to fight 1v1s. It's more fun that way, and it doesn't result in as much death and drama on your behalf. All right, now, the cap points are going up. Three of them are over there. I don't know where the tank destroyer is. I'm probably assuming he's somewhere in the bush back there. Uh, maybe scratching his parts. Nope, there he is. He has exposed himself. So I'm going to now push forward. Try to take this guy out before he can cause any harm. Let's see. It's going to be the approach here. Three shells going out. Now I'm 463 hit points. The eyes too can't. Uh, he, can, he can kill me now. So, down to 300 hit points. Let's see. Let's see, they got the cap points. That's kind of the big problem here. And they're sort of going to be able to hold on to A and B. Because they just have the hit points. I don't think... Uh, well, he's not going to be fast enough to arrive here. Got to be careful. And here's, here's the limit of this vehicle. 60 gear gun depression is a very tall tank. So whenever a tank's below you, is smaller than you, you're going to have a real big problem trying to depress that gun down. So just be careful. I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here, trying to peek this. Um, but I've got the Hellcat next to me. That's the more likely target. There we go. That's another a little bonus tip right here is, if you're a target for the enemy team, just make sure that you're not the easiest target. Right? Always make sure that someone else is the easiest target. Or that ideally nobody 
is the easiest target. Okay, the cap's ticking up now. We gotta be acting quick here. Um, we gotta act, be act quick before that points bar grows up. So let's see what we can do. The obviously a smasher is trying to run away here. Um, gonna be pushing forward. Let's take that out. Wonderful. And now I'm gonna have to be somewhat careful. I could just, you know, be the meme and drop down onto him, but I think that will be a very bad idea because he's too high on the hit points to actually fight back at him here. I'm gonna do it anyway, though. Like, uh, I am a predator. I'm gonna jump on him. Alright, he moved, damn it. Okay, well, that's a thousand points. So, that's that. I hope uh, you've enjoyed the tank review. I don't know if there is any context to uh, this review, but if there is, please let me know in the comments, because I have no idea what is going on right now, but uh, I do hope that this video was entertaining and informative. Until the next one. Stay safe, don't die, goodbye.